Okay, are we on? Are we on? Are we on? Nice. What can the people actually see? Hello, right. Here we are. Okay. If anyone's in the chat, um, let me know. Um, say hello. Say hi. Um, and if not, that's all right too. I just want to do a few um, little bits of housekeeping. Um, before we get going today, uh, just give me a minute, guys. Um, I don't know what's going on here. That's not what I want. There we go. Right. That's good stuff. Right. Hello again, if you can hear me and you're with us and you're joining the chat, just um, drop a like, um, a comment, anything. Just let me know you're here. We'll start in, give it another, what, 10 minutes and get crack a
Okay, right. Again, just checking the internet is going to not play games. I'm dropping in and out of stream right now. Right, there we go. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, finally. This is what happens when you go cheap. I'm using a I'm using an open source of software for the streaming. Uh, I don't want to mention the name, but if you've done this before, you probably know which one it is and it's completely messing me up. All right. Okay, I can see you. I can see you, RJ McKenzie. Um I can see Jedediah Kane. I can see Angel Osel Mensa, thank you guys for bearing with me. That uh, you absolute stars. Right, let's get into it straight away before um, any other dodgy stuff happens. Right, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen with you, and we're just gonna start watching Metatron's first video, the the video that started this whole controversy. We're just gonna go straight into it. Okay, let's go. It says, "Let's go." open just so that I don't have to be searching for anything um, but I've got a tiny little operation here so I think that that's not really helping it's not really helping the um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it the the internet out <laughs> Hey Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and this is a platform where we value truth, facts. If the truth offends some people, let them be offended. The question where the ancient Egyptians black is actually quite complicated. It's multi-layered. I'll try to bring as much clarity as possible in this video as often the matter is rooted on a variety of political expectations, agendas and the imposition of current perspectives and attitudes to depict and interpret past events in order to bend them in one's favor, a cauldron of personal bias and lies on any sides of the spectrum, not how you do real and professional academic work. So were they black, were they not black, does it even matter? Well yes, it does, but it is only one among many other possible questions such as how did they organize their armies, when did they reach the Bronze Age, how did they tackle commerce, what was their religion like, and a myriad more. All of these questions matter because they help us better understand a people, a civilization, their story. You create by asking questions. Now the question about their ethnicity becomes even more relevant when you are confronted by a group of people that tells you that the ancient Egyptians were black, the ancient Romans were black, the ancient Greeks were black, and if you disagree, you're a white supremacist and a racist. All right, it seems like I'm back on. Am I back on? Um, right. 
Oh, right. Sorry again, guys. If you can hear me right now, my internet is co- is chosen the worst. N- I don't. I can't explain it. My internet just decided on this night. I'm not gonna work. I'm just gonna. But I will fix this. I am fixing this. Okay, it's fine. We've got. Really don't mind. Okay. Okay. Right. If I can just hack this. Right, brilliant. That's done that as well. I will bookmark all of these. Hopefully that will help us out. So what I'm trying to do now is bookmark all the tabs I had open, um, bookmark them, and I'll just bring them up as and when I need them. Um, I'll, I'll spread out all the tabs, and I think that's what's crashing um, my, my stream right now. I don't think my rubbish little computer I've got and my um, open source streaming software is, can, can handle all the all the work I'm asking it to do. So that's what I'm going to do. That will take me, should take me about 15 minutes max. Maybe not even that. Five minutes I'm hoping, right? Get rid of all of this. Computer's really slow. Everything's slow. Internet's decided not to work, but we will get this. We'll start this video in a, in a sec. We'll start this live stream properly in a minute. Right. It's a good thing this is a Friday night. Clubbing days are long gone. So if they were ever there, I, I, I'm going to out myself out here. But, um, okay, right. Let me bookmark that. Please bookmark. Don't tell me I have to come back in. I'm not fine in this here. Right. Save. Save all of that. That should be bookmarked. Should be bookmarked. Everything should be bookmarked. Now I can close. Thank you. I'm closing that tab or that window. I've already saved it. I told you I've already saved it. Okay. All of that's done. Get out my face. Out my face. Okay, come on. Right. Oh, this is torture. Hello, Sam Femzy. Oh, yippee is not right. Not for me right now. Unbelievable. Okay. I'll just, um, I'm going to mute myself for a second, guys.
he I don't want to be on this guy's face. Why is he I don't understand. Right, and we're back guys. Just uh, I don't I don't I don't want to be on his channel either. I just want one video. Gang gang, okay. Are we back? Can you hear me? Uh if you oh, okay. I'm gonna write in the thing. Okay, thank you, NASA. Thank you so much. All right, good stuff, good stuff. We're back now. So I just did the old turning off and on again. Let's go. We're going back to what we're doing before, and we're just going to listen to um, good old Mr. Metatron. I wish I knew his name. I hate using that uh, um, that name. But, but before I carry on, I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to put this up on the um, up on the screen for everybody. This isn't like, there we go, there he is, oh my word, I don't know why he's gone with this look of his, <laughs> but this is all, I can't get it on my head, this is all I see when I see um Metatron, there we go, there he is, speaking his um, cauldrons into our ears right let's go metatron talk to us tell us the truth go back a bit here and there we go come on come on come on don't do this again to depict and interpret past events in order to bend them in one's favor. A cauldron of personal bias and lies on any sides of the spectrum. Not how you do real and professional academic work. So were they black, were they not black, does it even matter? Well, yes, it does. But it is only one among many other possible questions, such as how did they organize their armies? When did they reach the Bronze Age? How did they oh, tackle commerce? The what army. was their religion right. like so in a million? More. Then All of these questions of matter because they help us better understand a people, a civilization, their story. The you create thing. history All by right. asking Wrong. questions. Now the question about their ethnicity becomes even more relevant when you are confronted by a group of people that tells you that the ancient Egyptians were black, the ancient Romans were black, the ancient Greeks were black, and if you disagree, you're a white supremacist and a racist. Trying to bend people... Okay, right. Let's stop right here. Look, everything I'm going to say, Kuelimika touches up in his response to this the, the original video that caused the controversy that's got metatron this almost millions subscriber channel responding to a small youtuber uh, by the name of kuelimika uh in that video in kuelimika's response video that got this massive controversy started um kuelimika does a great job in addressing this point so much of what you're going to hear me say um, it doesn't really take much de debunking or undebunking or sifting through uh, Metatron's arguments uh, isn't really hard to do, okay? And what I'm going to say is this. We're all dilettantes in this. Uh, dilettante, for anyone that doesn't know, just casual sort of amateurs with um, interest. None of us... I don't have a PhD in Egyptology or in history or anything or archaeology. As far as I know, Metatron doesn't. Um, my training is in law um, and uh, to some extent the humanities, but law is my training. Um, Metatron seems to be, from what I can gather, some kind of um, bilingual uh, linguistics guy. Um, I don't know what Quilomik is, what, what his day job is, what his expertise is, but we're all here. None of us are experts but one thing that we are one thing that we're capable of doing is reading we can all read now metatron starts this video uh talking about uh it's not this debate is um 
not helped by people who call racist if you disagree with them that ancient Egypt wasn't uh, was wasn't black. Uh, but this is typical. You're one. You're, we're almost two minutes into an eighteen minute video. In another minute, will be what one sixth of the way through. Okay, and he said nothing. All he said so far, the big massive red flags um, that's you can we can already see from afar um, is what he's doing here. And his this video and his subsequent videos are riddled with this. You're gonna see ad hominem, um, ad hominem attacks constantly, straw man arguments, uh, just complete fallacies. Now, there this debate has gone on for an age. Okay, it's gone on for since Egyptology as a as a discipline began. It's gone on. Okay, and the very first Egyptologists were loathed. They didn't really want to admit it. You can read their writings. They didn't want to admit it. We're going to get to it tonight. Um, some of them do the wildest, like mental gymnastics to avoid. I'm going to show you their writings. They do the wildest mental gymnastics to avoid what's plainly before their eyes. This civilization was run, created established populated dominated by black people what we would today call black africans not middle eastern looking north africans that we have there today no black people from who look like anything from what you would see along the um, horn of africa today to deeper into into africa into uh southern sudan that those kind of people and Metatron, instead of going straight into this debate with talking about those, the two two sides of a coin here, talking about academics on, uh, you know, one side who believe Egypt was black and academics on the opposite side who believe it was white. He talks about people saying that, uh, calling names that you're racist if you don't, but <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why, why aim for the low hanging fruit? Why aim for people who are just, like Metatron, uh, Kuala Mika says it in his video, um, there's low-hanging fruit on both sides. There's racists on both sides. There's people with wild views on both sides. So why go in? You, you say you want to do academic debate. With all this rubbish that you've been saying for the first two minutes, why, why all to talk about, well, watch this. Put into agreeing with you with the usage of insults and name calling without evidence or in spite of contrasting evidence is ludicrous. It is a symptom of a feeble argument born from a weak mind. It is, however, important to underline that this is not a white versus black scenario. I unite with my white brothers, my black brothers, people of all ethnicity that value the truth, backed up by evidence, versus irrational, okay. convoluted, and politically motivated, annoying people. Let me show you. Cleopatra. I think everybody has heard of her, but I don't know if you've heard that there is a group of people that say that she was black because she was the queen of Egypt. Egypt is in, you know, Africa. Therefore, she was the queen of Africa. She was African, and she was black. And if you disagree, Yes, you guessed it. Check this tweet out. I am not sorry to tell you. <laughs> I just check this tweet out. Here at William the... Hill Vegas, get these exclusive. I really need that. The glee on his face is all too up. Uh, it's just blatant. He cannot wait to show you what he's talking about. How crazy the Afrocentrics are. Again, low hanging fruit. Most people, Kweli Mika dives straight into it in his video, most people worth with any um, with any sort of um, worth their soul at all, worth their weight in soul, however, however the expression goes, in this field, do not go around claiming that Cleopatra was a black woman. Most people accept the fact that she was most likely Greek Ptolemaic. Okay? So, why does Metatron... Again, we're on what more than three minutes into the video. Why does he go for somebody, some random guy on Twitter talking about Cleopatra was uh, was 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 black? Again, what I think he's doing, uh, Quelimika gives him the benefit of the doubt. Quelimika, go and watch his video, guys. His response to this, I don't know how you can watch that video 
Uh, he's got, you know, that's what happens when you got nearly a million subscribers. You just got fanboys. But a lot of his fans go back on onto spam Kweli Mika's video. I I doubt you they watched it. I, I really doubt they watched it. But even if they did, clearly just weirdos, straight up weirdos, because you can't watch Kweli Mika's response video and all you have to say is, oh, you got owned, you got owned. It's, it's completely ridiculous. Um, I'll just... I'll just play, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let this play and then I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll add something else to this. I really don't want an advert about gambling. Offers and daily chances to win cash prizes and free spins. <laughs> there we go. I am not sorry to tell you all, but Rihanna definitely has that role owned. Gaga and AJ shouldn't have even been in the running. Honestly, right. if a black woman ain't playing Cleopatra, then nobody should play the African Egyptian queen Cleopatra, period. It's very interesting that you would say that, first of all, because that Great, good, good. Oh, Metatron, you are so, oh, magnificent. <laughs> you have torn down this great mind on Twitter. <laughs> Who was, probably wasn't even talking to you at all. Um, I don't think he was. But um, three minutes in, you've... Oh, my goodness. Take a bow, Metatron. Cleopatra was not black. You've proved that ancient Egyptians throughout the th several thousands of years of their history were never black. And yeah, oh, just by this one point. Let's go, let's go. Look at, look at the glee in his face. That's not a representation of Cleopatra, that's a representation of Nefertiti. Somebody else points that out under the comment section and he responds by saying, Huh, white boy, I know who she's dressed as. It was a reference point. We don't believe that. But regardless of whether he knew that or not, the statement is still very ignorant. Cleopatra came from a dynasty of conquering Greeks. Her ancestor was a general of Alexander the Great's army. She was born in Egypt, but she wasn't a native Egyptian. She was Greek, her father was from Cyprus, and therefore she didn't share the same phenotypic traits with the local population. All rulers from the Ptolemaic Kingdom in Egypt from 305 BC to 30 BC would have been Greek. We don't know exactly in details what she looked like. She was described as being very attractive and very intelligent, but we do know that she would have looked like a Southern European, a Greek of the time. Now, I happen to be a Southern European. I'm from the Mediterranean. I'm Sicilian. I happen to be on the pale side. Maybe she looked like me. That point will be important for later. Well, it, Metatron draws on the fact that, um, you know, he happens to be Greek. Uh, um, sorry, was it say Italian or Greek? Or Sicilian, that's it, sorry, Sicilian. But, ha but falling on the pale side of a Sicilian, that point will be important later on because he doesn't even realise how he's tied himself up in absolute nonsense here. Maybe her skin would have been a bit more tanned, perhaps olive colour. Still, she wouldn't have looked like a native African Egyptian. And we've got statues that show her hair and face structure and nose structure together with some coins. Again, clearly Greek. Saying that Cleopatra needs to be represented by a black actress because she was from Egypt and she was the queen of Egypt. It's like saying in 300 years from now that George Washington was supposed to look like a Native American because he was born in America and he was the president of the American United States. Okay, fantastic, but what about all of the other pharaohs? What about the actual general population, the Egyptians? What did they look like? Right. Metatron, I'll, I'll, I'll just make this one last point on this straw man um, issue. Metatron could easily, easily mention Dr. Christopher Eret, linguist who specializes in um, ancient Egyptian uh, hieroglyphic uh, languages and... Uh, Afro-Asiatic language origins. Uh, he could have mentioned him. He could have mentioned Stuart Tyson Smith. He could have mentioned Rebecca Futo Kennedy. He could have uh, mentioned Dr. Sally... Um, I think it's Sally Ann Ashton. I can't remember her name properly now, but I, I will, I'll, I'll get that. He could have mentioned um, Czech Anta Diop. He could have mentioned Teofilo Benga. Major names in this field. No. He's demolished a guy on Twitter and he's told us in doing so, he's told us some of the most basic facts of history that my four-year-old could, you know, find on, on my phone. So, but again, we're four and a half minutes into this video. Now he's going to really get into the meat of proof as to how the ancient Egyptians went black. Here we go. 
To answer this profession in the most accurate way possible, we have to examine Egyptian art, understand how they utilized color to represent themselves and their neighbors, and we'll address the term Kemet, the word the Egyptians used to refer to Egypt. We'll talk about an article that deals with the first successful genomic testing on ancient Egyptian mummies, where the mitochondrial genomes of 90 mummies were taken, and we'll discuss the results together. You'll find links in the description below for further reference. This and much more after a brief word from our sponsor. And now I'd like... No, we're not, we're not doing that at all. Um, to this point, to this specific point, I want to take you to Kwelemika's video on, on this issue. So we're going to go for... Um, Metatron response to Metatrons where ancient Egyptians black. I got that bookmarked. All right, let's do this. All right, here's Metatron. Uh, sorry, Kweli Mika. I'm, 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 he'll forgive me for that. You'll have to forgive me for that, Kweli Mika, because I keep um getting your names wrong there. Um, right. Getting them mixed up. Getting your name mixed up with this fine Italian Sicilian gentleman is... um. I don't know if you take too too lightly to that, but um okay. We've got now we've got this is a video, this is Kwelimika's response video that I'm about to play for you, and specifically, um this particular video. Okay, so right, let's play the first clip um, of the video. Seek, let's the seek 340. I think it's that 340. Kolimika makes um, a point about what um, Metatron's just done there. And I think it's important to cross-reference and see what Metatron, um, sorry, what Kolimika said real name about was no longer. The guy on Twitter isn't a scholar, Metatron. There are scholars like Dr. Diop, Ivan Van Sertima, Chancellor Williams, Professor Henry Clark, and so many others that have books written on this topic and present argumentations in those books for a black African ancient Egypt. Why don't you address those arguments? This is hardly the way we do academic work. It's funny how you only choose to present such weak and extreme claims as the arguments for a black Egypt and somehow failed to include the very many works of scholars who argued that Egypt was a black African civilization. A quick search on Wikipedia will help you know the scholars that have spoken for and against this hypothesis, right? A quick search. Right. Kwelimika is saying a quick search on Wikipedia will show you a very sort of perfunctory look on Wikipedia will give you this page that you can see up on the screen, Ancient Egyptian Controversy. Um, it's still there today. You can Anyone can find it. And it will it start, it acts as an entry level, um, entry level point into this debate. It will give you, okay, fine, Wikipedia is not the be all and end all. It's not where you should stop your research if you really want to do know anything about this topic but it's a good place to start because what will, you will often find with wikipedia is our footnotes and footnotes to um academic sources okay and that's kwelemika's point kwelemika is saying why would you why would you start this debate by doing what you've done by referencing random people on on, on the internet when a quick easy perusal on the internet will show you that there are weighty arguments on the side of those who claim Egypt was black. To this to this statement, um, Metatron then does a response to this video. It is the most, <laughs> it's one of the most ridiculous things you will see. And again, his fans, you read the comments below and they love it. They absolutely love it. They think, oh my goodness, he got owned. I honestly think um, at least half of uh, Metatron subscribers are kids who love his, um, his playing around with swords. You know, the kids who like, he, he likes to make videos talking about swords and all of this stuff. Okay, I think pro at, at least half of them will be kids just who like that kind of content because a lot of them just come on the channel, on... on uh, Kwelimika's channel and other people's channel saying, oh, you guys got owned by Metatron. But again, why doesn't Metatron point people to credible sources 
on the black Egypt theory? You have to ask yourself. Kwelemike says you can easily do this by going on Wikipedia and, and you know, and you find a quick entry level source uh, sources into this topic. Uh, to this, Metatron responds like this. I'll find that. Um, no, I don't want that. I want... What do you call it? My response to an Afrocentrist on black Egyptians. Here we go. Right. I, I think this is important. This is incredibly important because... If nothing, it shows, um, I think, disingenuous, dis, disingenuity, we'll call it, yeah, that's that's the word for it. It shows the disingenuity of the person that, you know, is, we're, we're debating here, uh, that we're all debating. I'll, I'll just, um, where is it? Let's go. Don't I really don't want to watch an advert, but okay, this is YouTube. Is HelloFresh worth the price? No, it's not. Absolutely. Yeah, I just really love the idea of having my meals planned and food shopping taken care of. And now that I've fresh. tried it for a few weeks, I can say that I actually save money with HelloFresh. This week I ordered a herb chicken with lemon that's pepper that's fries. I'm, I'm Middle Eastern chickpea bowl. Oh, and honey glazed salmon with roasted veggies. Before HelloFresh, the life. thought of planning Dying and shopping. Starvation. Don't go anywhere near HelloFresh. Similar text with similar topics. Beginning with the systematic analysis of lexicon. Thank you, Carlo. Um, it seems like you're you're an open-minded sort of a um, listener here. I've not seen you before, either in the comments or in in the previous live um, I did. But it's good to have you here. I personally, let me tell you now. I used to love Metatron's content a long time ago. I'd say, well, not a long time ago. I'd say mm, seven, six, seven years ago. Um, I was really into some of his stuff, especially his stuff on Japanese culture. Um, but I think something happened. And this is where you've got to be... You've got to... There, a lot's going on in the world right now. Let's be honest. You know, there are a lot going on in the world politically right now. And with that, a lot of people have decided to capitalize on it. And it's actually not that hard to do in life. I, I always say it's not hard in life to make money. It actually isn't. It just depends what principles you're, you're willing to just, to you're willing to sell, you know. And a lot of people have decided to just jump on the bandwagon of anti-wokeness. And it doesn't really matter. Truth doesn't matter as long as they can capitalize on people's frustration with... People's frustration with, um, with you know, the, oh, the whole woke agenda, okay? Which is annoying for people like me because woke, I remember using woke. Woke just used to mean, I remember a time when woke just meant you're awake to to the government, to, to, to the big man, you know, um, screwing the little man. That's all, that, I remember a time when that's all it meant, you know, woke. But now the word is hijacked and everything, so... You know, anyway, let's um, let's just go into this this. So this is now Metatron's um response to Kueli Mika saying, "Look, you don't have to look for a guy on Twitter to 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 assault and show your intellectual superiority against on this topic. You have actual credited academics who believe that ancient Egypt and its foundational stages by the, in the stages." that formed it in the most crucial stages of ancient Egypt's history was black. You don't have to go to Twitter and you can, even Wikipedia, even is the point. Kuelemik is arguing 
he's making a point out of absurdity. Okay, he's saying even in Wikipedia, this is Metatron's response to that fairly transparent statement. Constitutes a valid point of argument. Yes, Egypt is in Africa. Thank you for acknowledging a fact. <laughs> on this point, we are in alignment. A quick search on Wikipedia will help you know the scholars that have spoken for and against this hypothesis. A quick search on Wikipedia. It's not that hard. <sighs> uh, anyhow. This is a subtle conversation trick. Well, it's such an easy thing to do. Just look it up on Wikipedia. But No, he's not saying it's such an easy thing to do. My guy, listen, listen. <laughs> All right. I promised I wouldn't keep interrupting um, the subject matter. Let, let, let's hear him out. Let's hear him out to the end. You couldn't even do that. Well, first of all, it's a non-argument. I do not use Wikipedia, Quilimica. And to be honest, neither should you. Uh oh, listen, without knowing the person's heart and mind and, what, <laughs> you know, it's really tempting here. But I'm just going to jump out on the limb here and say, there is not a sh there is no shadow of a doubt in my mind that in making any number of videos that on his channel Metatron has um resorted to Wikipedia at some point. <laughs> at some point, not just at some point in his YouTube career of history debunking or whatever, Metatron has gone on Wikipedia at some point and he's found useful information, if not useful, if not useful information on Wikipedia directly, useful information on the sources cited by many a Wikipedia article. It's just, it's ridiculous. But he sits there and he says, with his hand flailing, with like, as if he's making a point. My dad used to say something, never trust a man who talks with his hands. This man talks with his hands constantly. If someone's talking with their hands constantly, distrust him, him or her. I catch myself doing it every now and then myself, but you really, I, I, I hate it. I hate it when I do it. He's there flailing his hands about, doing this little um, circle sign with his finger, the little Trump sign, um, six or whatever it is, constantly as if he's making good points. And he comes out with the most ridiculous thing. Oh, Thank you, Bank to Twenty One. Yes, college level research uses Wiki. It, it's 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 just stupid. It's it's childish. He's good. so into his video, which is thirty five minutes long, in which he glazes over, edits out a lot of um Quilimica's salient points. Okay, he's here quibbling over the fact that with nine ten minutes into his video, almost a third of the time into his video response, he's quibbling over the fact that Quilimica said. Arguing out of absurdity, saying you can look on Wikipedia, you know, you don't have to attack people on Twitter. Even Wikipedia will show you there are credible sources on this issue. He's now going to teach us the fundamentals of research. You must not rule number one, children. Never use Wikipedia. <laughs> this man. But his, his, um, his subs can't see through it. Again, I'm convinced that at least half of the people that watch with Metatron's content are children, absolute children. Children slash racists, let's just put it. And I don't mean racists like they go out, like they've got a secret stash of Nazi memorabilia. Just people who might even smile at you down the road, might just, but really they've got like animosity that they wouldn't admit to themselves against people of other complexion or just just it's whatever i don't want to go into that it's toxic but half of his viewers are are along that spectrum children and people who want their biases confirmed simple as anyway so let's go back to the original original video we're not going to watch your um advert for some um dodgy IP blocker thing. Um, and let's skip all of that. Probably uses it for trolling. My opinion, my opinion. There's, there's no facts there. Oh my goodness. There's a halo around his head, right? Oh, I didn't want to show off. Ignore that. Welcome back. The only way. Oh, no. You know, not everything will move to the cloud. As CIO, you need a hybrid cloud. 
Right, another firm as unique as your business, a cloud that comes to you and the corners of your enterprise, you. bye -bye. turning the data. Welcome back. The only way to answer this is to make sure that you and I both know what we mean exactly with the word black. And I've noticed that some academics these days love dancing around this one because it's controversial and they don't want to offend anyone. So what do they do? They say, oh, but the ancient Egyptian didn't have these modern concepts of black people and white people. That's a modern construct. So they were neither. That's dodging the question. So let me be 100% crystal clear here. Did the entirety of the population of Egypt or the majority of the population of Egypt look like this handsome man? No. The ancient Egyptians were a multi-ethnic African <laughs> civilization. It was multi-ethnic because of its... The most patronizing thing I've ever seen. I, I tell you now, I... Physically watching, having to watch this man's um, content on this topic in preparation for this was one of the most uncomfortable, uncomfortable things... Um, glad to have you here, Banana Palm. Um, I'll check out your I'll check out your comments in in a while. But um, one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever witnessed is this guy's content on this topic. It is riddled with things like this. This handsome man right here. Um, he says, "I think we all know what we mean by black, right?" And he points to my. I think it's the actor Maya Shahali. I, I, I love him. He's a great actor. He was recently in that Netflix one, um, Leave the World Behind, I think it was. Great film. If you haven't seen it, um, check it out, guys. Um, but um, so we've got... <laughs> we've got Metatron pointing to Mayer Shahali as a... As a de facto as a default image of what a black person is um there's so much wrong with that but i'm going to carry on playing the video for now very geographical position a connection between africa the mediterranean basin and asia a strategic location oh oh and just before we carry on i want to say on on cleopatra there's been some academics believe they found her tomb and after DNA sequencing and whatnot, they believed that um, it showed that she was actually quite mixed. Um, but that's not conclusive. I'm, I'm talking off the top of my head there, so don't quote me. But I believe that's been found. In any case, just as regards Cleopatra, we know that the Ptolemaics were, uh, and Alexander the Great himself encouraged miscegenation. Just a big word for people mixing cultures mixing, uh, different races mixing, white, black. He encouraged his armies to go into Asia and mix with the local people. Um, there's a there's a word that was used specifically for it. I can't remember now because I had to close all the tabs. But um, just to make the stream work more smoothly, I had to close a lot of tabs. Um, and if you just joined us, that was a massive um, that was a massive problem earlier. We know the Ptolemaics did this with the populations of Egypt. They really encouraged their Greek people to to um to 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 mix with the local African population. So there's it's not far fetched to think that Cleopatra herself might have had yes, we have that white marble statue, but that doesn't really tell us about what her skin tone might have looked like. Um again, when you look at the woman who played Cleopatra in the in now infamous Netflix um uh, documentary or docudrama she's not a million miles away from what she might have looked like at least in skin tone she's she's not she just isn't but we'll just that's just a side issue let's carry on on the crossroads of continents the egyptian civilization flourished around the nile river which was a cultural conduit of civilization there is diversity in the skin of the Egyptians. Through time and space, the ethnic percentages will differ depending on what area of Egypt and which era. Egypt is not disconnected from the rest of Africa, and it is absolutely imperative to fully appreciate the complexity and connectivity of such a geographical area. However, the ancient Egyptians did acknowledge and recognize the physical differences between them and their neighbors, specifically utilizing... 
Okay. Really important to stop here. Really important to stop here. Right, because what Metatron does here, for a per for somebody who claims to be all about intellectual rigor and academic rigor, is really um I wouldn't say I wouldn't say outright dishonest, but I would say lazy. Okay. He says uh Questions of their race will differ along time and region, region and era, he says. But he fails, what he fails to do specifically in this video is explain how significant that is. Because pre-dynastic, early dynastic Egypt, I, I said this in one video, um, in, one of, in one of my um, earlier videos, Egypt itself, ancient Egypt, had an ancient Egypt. OK, um, by the time you've got the Romans invading Egypt, you've already had about 4000 years of history of established Egyptian history, culture, um, empires over successively. Um, everything that made Egypt what we know today. OK, everything that made Egypt what we know today was already established by the time the Rome, by the time Cleopatra's era. Okay. That's not debatable at all. I'll show you something in a minute. Bear with me. I have to get tabs open up again that I didn't think I'd, I'd have to do. I'm just going to pause the, the, the screen for a second. And this might blow your mind. Some okay. Right. So we're talking about, time and error um, in ancient Egypt. All right, here we go. Hopefully, I can get this out. Still here, guys. Just finding you uh, an important bit of information. Again, I have to. I'd ha I've had to get right back up again. A lot of sources that I had ready and waiting at the start of this stream because the internet just crashed the the whole system. The, the internet was faulty, and I had to close down a lot of tabs just to make the stream work. So I'm having to resurrect some of these tabs again for you guys. But trust me, this this will be worth it. So we're gonna look at what. Um, one of the pillars of early Egyptology had to say on the the formation of Egyptian civilization. And Edouard Naville is his name. He's one of these types who come all the way to saying this originated in Egypt. Uh, sorry, the Egypt originated in up uh, from the Nubian people, what we would call the Nubian people, moving down the Nile River and but then he does this weird thing where he says, but no, 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 it can't be them because they're blacks. Um, it must have been Southern Arabia. Um, it's ridiculous. But I'm going to just find this quote for you guys in a second. Um, okay, come on, where's it gone? There we go. I think both Metatron and Quelimika aren't perfect on this topic. Why did you say that, um, Carlo? What's what's um, I def I'm not gonna I make no bones about it. I agree with you on Metatron, but what is it about Quelimika that's not that you don't find 
to your taste. Let me know. Um, fair enough. From a statue bank bank two, I don't think so. From a statue and the coinage we have, definitely I wouldn't I wouldn't die on the hill of Cleopatra being black or even mixed. She looks fairly Greek to me. It's fairly. It makes sense that she would be. I'm not quibbling over that at all, at all. Um, I was just suggesting to you that it's not as just. I wouldn't be surprised if there was more nuance to that topic than we're led to believe. That's all, right? Um, based on what, based on what we're finding out, <laughs> right? Finding out every day what's coming out from the archaeological record, right? There we go. Here's what um, a man by the name of Edward Neville had to say. Um, There we go. Okay, Carlo Nasser says, some of his evidence isn't always convincing because some paintings and statues don't always support his argument. Like the stuff, um, what's that say? The facial proportions. Okay. Deal with that in a second. All right, here we go. Here's uh, a fellow by the name of Wallace Budge. Wallace Budge's work in um, Egyptology is crucial, absolutely crucial. A lot of what Egyptology say as, um, without even debating, goes back to a lot of what the early earliest um, study uh, students of this topic, such as Budge, such as Naville, such as um, uh, Amelino, had to say. Okay. And here's what Budge um, had to say about the origins of ancient Egypt. Um, Many facts go to show the persistence of Negro influence. Uh, do, do, do. Come on. Okay, having to flip through scripts here, guys. 
Okay, there we go, we'll just do that. I really don't know why my computer's chosen today to be really slow. Um, he is set to go by the paintings and statues, but the facial features he talks about aren't always present in the statues he shows. You'd have to give me exactly the ones you're talking about, but um, I don't want to go off topic for now. I will come back to that, I promise. Go for another one. I'm just going to read um, directly. I can't quite find the the page itself. But um, here's what Bol Wallace Bodge had to say in his book, um, Egyptian Sudan. I think it's Egyptian Sudan. He says... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm reading from Osiris and the Egyptian Resurrection, 1911, by Ernest Wallace Budge. That the beliefs examined therein, that is the book of us, um, uh, that is, he says, now if we examine the religions of modern African peoples, we find that the beliefs underlying them are almost identical with those of the ancient Egyptian ones described above. As they are not derived from Egyptians, it follows that they are the natural products of the religious mind of the natives of certain parts of Africa, which is the same in all periods. That's Wallace Budge talking about the source of the religion of the Egyptians, saying that it comes from deep within Africa. Then you've got another quote from uh, Naville writing in The Origin of Egyptian Civilization. He says this, I think this I can show you up on the screen. If I can just get to it. Okay. If you're in the chat and or if you're in if you're watching me, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um it's been completely a complete nightmare tonight. Um but again, thank you guys. So you've got <sighs> the point of this will become clear in a second. Go.
Okay, here's Edward Nafil. Um, and he's talking about what Egyptologists casually will admit to today, whilst still making it ambiguous as to whether Egypt was black. Edward Nafil writes in this article, um, I think I believe the title is The Origin of Egyptian Civilization. If we consult Egyptian inscriptions, we find that without any exception, the South is always what comes first. The North is never spoken of as an ancient resort from which the population should have issued. The South has always the preeminence over the North. The kings of the South are mentioned before those of the North. The usual name for king probably means the king of the South. This is what Kwelimika mentions in one of his video, uh, videos, Nesut. Um, that name was basically literally meant king of the kings of the south or king of the south. That's where their authority came from. So this idea that Egypt issued out of um, the Mediterranean or they were a Mediterranean people is complete bonkum. We're talking when we're talking about Egypt proper, the foundational elements of Egypt. When we're talking about everything that made Egypt Egypt, the pyramids, the religion, all of that, the the science their people all of that came from an indigenous population an indigenous population of african black african people ranging from different um phenotypes as you will find across africa from the aquiline nose and thickish lips to the um uh, much more broad nose and thickish lips to just and to the really dark skin to the light mocha type skin all of that is found i mean come on i don't personally believe it myself i have a, another opinion but there's a reason why the horn of africa is meant or africa itself is 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 classed today by the majority of scientists as the origin of mankind again i have my own theories on that i don't believe that but there's a good reason for that africa at least everyone agrees on this has the widest genetic variation of any other continent on this on this earth so you've already got in ancient times the microcosm the black microcosm that made up ancient egypt Naville is pointing this out just like all the other um egyptologists would do later on what they do though however just like naville what they do though is they play a sleight of hand so what egyptology did was decide this is too inconvenient it's too inconvenient to say that this is the origin of this civilization black africa so what we'll say is listen listen to what listen to what um he concludes um so he says, uh, he goes on, he talks about, um, uh, I'm just going to cruise over it here in this particular quote. He says, the Egyptian looks towards the direction whence his God originally came. This, this direction is at the same time that of the now. Okay, listen, I'm just going to stop now because I've not even let um, my man here finish his spiel and I'm kind of get doing too much. Let's hear Metatron skin tone as one of the major distinguishing factors. Already disproving this idea pushed by some people that the ancient Egyptians didn't even see a difference in skin tone and that that's only something that we modern people see. Probably humankind has been noticing that difference since. Right. The reason I went off on that tangent again, I just remembered. Metatron claims, claims from about 719 to 726 in this video that we're watching here. Oh, the skin color, the ethnicity will vary across region and time he just brushes over that as if that means nothing again by the time you get to the romans egypt had had in quick succession now the greeks were in charge for several hundreds of years then you before that you had an asiatic a market the asiatic population the ba the persians and the babylonians had dominated so by this stage this late stage we're coming to the close of the egyptian civilization now we're coming to the, it's the last, in fact, the last hurrah was when the 25th dynasty came to reestablish what they saw was Egypt proper. <laughs> they came to reestablish what they started, 
which is what again many Egyptologists, original Egyptologists, and even today look up uh, uh, the the archaeologist uh, historian David Wengro. Uh, he's doing he's doing great work now as to to a white guy, non Afrocentrist, just proving the fact that this civilization is Nubian in origin. They were not, they didn't see each other as different. <laughs> that is why you will see Egyptians painted, Nubians painted sometimes as jet black and sometimes as the same mocha brown color that just denotes black people of Africa. Um, you'll find that interchangeable along the war arts. Anybody that tells you differently is just, just go and look at it yourself. These were the same peoples. Skin tone be damned. <laughs> it, they were the same people. People telling you otherwise are playing, they're just playing, they're just playing you for, for a sop. Okay. And you can either choose to be a sop <laughs> or choose to use your own head. Okay. We'll play, we'll carry on this and, and just say no more period. for a good five Of minutes. course, the ancients didn't share the same beliefs and classifications as 19th century, 20th century and 21st century people when it comes to the words that we use to identify people and how we use them. Uh, even in my case, I have recently immigrated into the United States of America. And when I was filling in my immigration sheets, they asked me to put the ethnicity section. And when I asked, so what should I put? They said, just put white. Well, if this was the 1920s in the same United States of America, they would have had me write either Italian as a separate ethnicity or, as it did happen, black, depending on, I suppose, on your skin tone, maybe, I don't know. These classifications are indeed fluid, but I think we all know what we mean when we say black. Like this guy. Here. Complete rubbish. Complete rubbish. Right. I'm going to show you, I'm from West Africa. Okay, I'm going to now show you why what he said there is complete rubbish. Metatron does it brilliantly. I don't need to do this. But for the purpose of this live, I'll show you why this is complete rubbish. Right. Uh, I'm not on Twitter, negative score. I'm not on Twitter because um, it's just too too much noise on Twitter. Too much noise on Twitter. And this is a small operation and we just need to stay focused. So yeah, that's why. Not that you asked for a life story, but um, I'll give it to you anyway. Okay. Okay. Look, I'm going to say something now. A lot of you might not like it, but I think we're all adults here. Um, what, what, um, Kwelimika, uh, sorry, not Kwelimika, I need to stop saying that. I'm going to defame Kwelimika. don't want to do that. So, um, Metatron claims that I think we all know what we mean by a black person. And he proceeds to show a picture of Mayesha Ali, the, the famous um, African-American actor. But if this doesn't kind of show the level of ignorance... Um, and you know what? I actually don't blame him completely... He might be operating under, and I think he, for the most part, he actually is. He's operating a, under a bias that he won't admit to himself. So, um, 
he won't admit to himself that he's got a bias, so he just doubles down. You know, one of the first things that you have, I don't know, I don't know, you're talking about pygmies in ancient Egypt, banana palm, but um, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Okay, so um, let me turn the screen back on. In West Africa, you will find all kinds of... That's West Africa. Now, by the time you get to places like Nigeria, Mali, you cannot be saying you're not in Africa. You're not, you're not in Black Africa territory. You just can't be saying that. Yet, some people will try and attempt to say that. But here we go. Here's what my point. You've got in West Africa the Aousa people. You've got them ranging from this guy here, this handsome guy here, and this beautiful woman there, eh? yeah, yeah, okay, great. Patronizing. That's that's I'm saying that tongue firmly in cheek. That's what Metatron calls Mayasha Ali. Um, you've got all these skin tones here. There are the Aousa people or the Fuller people. You got dark there, and these aren't even the blackest people we got in Africa. So you got light skinned people there, and you got very dark houses. You've got very light houses like these women here, all under the same sun, all under the same African sun. There are some of them there on the side. There are some of the ladies there, full of women. Some of them are very dark, as you can see. There are some there. These are all black people. There's, there's, we, we call that we refer to them as black. Because they are black, okay? We go back to Metatron. I'm going to close these tabs down. If you've seen what you what I've put up, you and, you know, but... <laughs> what Metatron this is what the Egyptians there, said. Look at this image to the right. Go back in this Black. Video. I think we all know what well, we mean by Well, if this was the 90... Okay? In twenties in the same United States of America, they would have had been white, either Italian as a separate ethnicity, or as it did happen, black, depending on a, I suppose on your skin tone, maybe I don't know. These classifications are indeed fluid, but I think we all know what we mean when we say black. Like this guy. Okay, fine. He does say they're fluid, he said but to proceed by saying I think we all know what we mean by black and to show one face, that being this actor. I, I, it's offensive, it's offensive, it's not, it's nothing to cry about, but it's offensive, my Esher Ali I agree with is a handsome man, he calls him handsome, you know, yeah, you know, whatever, bit creepy, but say whatever, I think he's saying that to, to, it's patronising, I get why he's saying it, but it's, it's patronising, but we've, it's akin to pointing to this, and say, I think we all know what we mean by black. Hey, look at that. Maya Shirley looks nothing like this. Uh, minstrel, wherever you're from, we know it as gollywog dolls here. He's nothing like this, but to just pick a particularly dark African man and say, I think we all know what we mean by black. Uh, come on, dude. This is... Anyway, all right. Watch Kweli Mika's response to this video. He talks about this um, in at you know a reasonable length, and he shows this up for what it is. Anyway. I'll... Here is what the Egyptians said. Look at this image. To the right, you see how the Egyptians represented themselves. The black gentleman is representing a Nubian, basically a member of the very prominent and very powerful and advanced kingdom of Kush, which was south of Egypt. And those are representations of an... Okay, let's stop right here. Again, we're all dilettantes here. We're all sort of um, uh, nighttime um, experts, you know, armchair sort of experts on this topic. 
but that's okay as long as you can read you know th- there's you don't have to have a phd in anything you're just reading what other people have concluded reading their studies their methodologies but that aside you can use your own brain as well if you're coming to a topic not biased you can use your brain to conclude what metatron and the likes of him find so hard to conclude themselves he shows this to show you that this is how the ancient egyptians um perceive themselves he shows by the way before we carry on this is a reconstruction it's a very bad reconstruction um again i point you to meta uh, sorry Kuelimika's video response to this um in which he shows you uh, the original tomb paintings this guy to the far right, the Egyptian with the moniker Egyptian, in those tomb paintings, is far darker than this. Than, than this, and this guy in the middle, the Nubian, who's clearly an African, uh, you can see in the tomb paintings also. Now, why is this important? Because Metatron is now going to go on to say to you, see. The Egyptians painted themselves differently. They showed themselves differently to the Nubians. Right. But there's a couple of things wrong to this. He's also going to tell you that, look, they painted themselves different to the Asiatic and the Libyan. What you are witnessing is cognitive dissonance. So what do I mean by that? You've got an image of skin tones, okay? And... At least three out of four of these are from Africa. Okay? You've got one on the end, Libyan. As far as last time I looked, that's in Africa. Nubia, African. Asiatic, okay, fine, not in Africa. Egyptian, African. If, as Metatron goes on to to assert, this last skin tone on the right is supposed to depict what we have today in modern day Egypt, he's lost his mind. What do I mean by that? If the Egyptians were saying, look, we are an olive skinned people akin to what we have currently uh, today in 2024 in modern day Egypt, why did they not just depict themselves as the Libyan on the far left? Why didn't they just depict themselves as that? What, so are you telling me that the Libyans living on the continent of Africa in the same hemisphere, <laughs> on, the, on the Sahara belt? They, I, I don't understand. Are, they, are the modern Libyans today not? Would you not class them in the same complexion, as the, as the same complexion today? You know, would you, are they not on the Mediterranean? Of course they are, okay? So why then does the Egyptian decide to paint himself this deep brown? Okay, not jet black, but this deep brown. He certainly isn't purporting to say that he is of the same hue as what you would have today in Egypt, the majority ruling population today in Egypt. So what then is this deep brown? Again, if you're not coming to this with blinkers, if you're not coming to this saying that, oh, oh, olive, 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 you're seeing this skin tone on the far right for what it is. The light brown you see, the, the brown complexion that you see in Africa, or from Africans, from people that would be, to all intents and purposes, be called black today, living in white populations. Again, these are houses that you're looking at. Um, not there. These are houses. I could, I could carry on um, through the images, but I, there's, not, there's, there's no point in doing it. And to prove this point to you, um uh, okay, right, let's 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 just do it now. Okay. Uh, right, there we go. To prove this point to you, we're gonna look take a look at um one of the most revered Egyptologists of his day, a guy by the name of Charles Anton. And he has this same problem too. He can't help but see the fact that the Egyptian population, the ancient Egyptian population, looking at the war paintings, looking at their religious texts, their everything, he can't help but conclude that they're a black civilization. 
But what he does is amazing, okay, in doing this, in coming to this conclusion. Okay, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Come on. Bear with me, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm reading your comments now. Europe crusher, Europe crusher. Uh, it cracks me up that every other people can travel all around, but we can travel around our home continent. Yes, that's exactly what modern day Egypt, that's exactly what modern Egyptologists expect us to believe. That black Africans, they say this thing about, oh, the Sahara Desert. We were traveling, you, there are people called the Tuareg. They have lived in the Sahara Desert. To, there are, <laughs> they've lived in the Sahara Desert. Last I checked, the Tuareg are predominantly a black African race. They are blacks. They are actually black people. What you'll get is someone coming and rationalizing that way and saying, no, 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 they, 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 they came later. The, the black ones came later. The, the real Tuaregs are the, are the light, lighter skin, clearly, a, you know, uh, <laughs> just nonsense, right? Okay. So, um, I'm trying to... Just go to what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the keyword I'm looking for? No. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to shut the screen down to look for this properly. Nobody, yeah, nobody cares about Cleopatra. I agree. I agree, Yop Crusher. I wonder if Carlo Nasser is still here. I wonder if Carlo Nasser is still listening to us. Because Carlo Nasser seemed open-minded, but um, undecided. Didn't mean to rhyme there, but I did. So there we go. Open-minded, but undecided. Come on, why is it taking so long to load? Why everything decided to mess up tonight? <sighs> Come on, all right. Move it, move it. <sighs> no, this is not going to work. This is just not going to work. Okay, right. Could you not just... Right, we're just going to play the video. Just play the video. 
Asiatic and a Libyan. Of course, it's important to take into consideration the cultural and commercial and religious exchanges that happen between the kingdom of Kush and Egypt. Of course, a certain percentage of Nubians, which will differ depending on which area of Egypt we are right. talking about, okay. will have lived among the Egyptians. But the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image, with this. Let's go back there. among the Egyptians, but the Egyptians do represent themselves with this. Okay. Look at the picture um, that Metatron, Metatron puts this picture up to say the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image. I don't know what he thinks he's looking at, but these are Africans. These are black Africans. In fact, the people you are seeing in this picture, um, for want of a better phraseology or, or word, um, you can still find them. You can actually still find them in Egypt. If you look closely at the image that you're looking at there, you're looking at people with shirt, short, um, twisted curls, um, especially the guy on the left-hand side. And I'm not going to show you what... Um, this is unbelievable that you even have to do this. Okay. Oromo people. Here they are. They're not exactly like all of them. Mayasha Ali's complexion. Um, Please just come on. You got the Oromo people. Some of them are as light as this. But I have my own um, reservations about that. I think as with as with what's happening today, um, as has happened in the times past, I think the darker you basically darker skinned people getting pushed further south um there are some of the oromo people here's a video on youtube that talks about the oromo people these are let's look at the afar people these are the afar people for me they're the ones that closely closest Till today, carrying even the traditions, you will still see Afar people looking like the Meje of ancient Egypt that you see um, depicted as these figurines, these statues um, of soldiers. There they are, some of them. These are with the same hairstyle still till today that you will see on Egyptian tombs. On war paintings. These people exist. In their light tones. And their darker tones. These are black people. I don't know. He's going to get offended again. But a cursory look. On the internet. Could show you. That what he purports to. Purports to show us here. As she. She. He's going to tell us they're olive skinned. See? The, 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 ol, olive skinned Egyptian? No. These are black people. <laughs> What's wrong with this man? These are black people. <laughs> and, and, but this is what Egyptology has done. First of all, um, Another thing Egyptology likes to do is to say, um, all right, let's do this. I'm going to show you something else. No, don't want to do that.
go back, go back, go back. Okay. Another thing he does, he likes to do is reconstruct images. So the images you see on the tomb walls, you see in textbooks. But what you'll see them do is they'll take several shades of black, of brown, off of these reconstructions. So that when you're looking at it in a textbook, you don't know what you're looking at. You think you're looking at the population that is there today. But that's... Now, I used to be a proponent of, oh, of course, like, long time ago before i knew anything you look at these images in textbooks and you don't question them you don't even think twice you think oh of course yeah it makes sense they're like they're just really they're really they're middle easterners they're you know arab or whatever of that complexion of that hue their olive skin quote unquote as as we like to say but again when if you were to look on the two i, I went to the british museum um last year sometime in the summer and I couldn't believe how dark these renderings were. The deep, re the, the what you're looking at is not some kind of, they've not painted themselves some pale pastiche. They've, paste, they've painted deep brown skinned people. Now, does that then mean that you, you're you not going to get, you're, does that then mean you're not going to get um, them also depicting jet black African people? Of course you will. Look, Again, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna... hold on a sec whilst I get these images up for you. Okay, okay. Give me a tab. It's disgusting. I, I really can't, ex I, I can't stress enough how disgusting this whole thing is to me and because what it's done is it's robbed people of their history to the point where to the point where you have people whose history have been stolen trying to reclaim it back and we're the ones that are now being called black people africans black africans are now being called the people who are st we're stealing we're supposedly stealing history you know we're the ones stealing history right in the images i'm about to show you i'm sure i'm going to show you reconstructions and i'm going to show you the originals okay um here's one this is what's typical in um so-called egyptology textbooks okay See that one. There we go. Right, look at this image. Uh, I need to turn the screen back on. Uh, here we go. Let's do this. Turn the screen back on. Now look at this. This is Hathor, uh, the goddess Hathor, and Seti the first. Okay, this is what you're looking at. Right, great. This is a reproduction of a wall image. Okay. What you're looking at are not people wearing wigs. We'll come to that. You're, they're going to tell you a lot of the time, these are wigs, these are wigs, these are wigs. Yes, you, we have found wigs in tombs. Yes, that's no biggie. But two questions. Why are the Egyptians fashioning their wigs in locks, in Afro locks? If Why are they fashioning their wigs in the, in the style of people who are supposedly beneath them uh, culturally or whatever we're, we're often told that oh if you see a Nubian in ancient Egypt they're 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 slaves or whatever why are the ancient Egyptians fashioning their hair in kinky in in a style that people with kinky hair texture are known to throughout ancient history okay and secondly why is no one why is no one done in their real hair in ancient Egypt all these images are just people wearing wigs bit a bit ridiculous isn't it okay let's keep it on let's keep it let's keep it moving we've got hathor again a representation of the same image that you see here this is an old textbook hathor and seti that's hathor the goddess has been switched around let me show you the original image you've got people You got people depicted like this. 
like this. Oh, come on. Why is my computer so slow? Come on. You can see the difference in coloration. You can see how the two, um, the two, the the king king seti is markedly brown. That's a that's a that's a deep brown. You can see the detail on his locks. You can see that that's African hair in locks, in braids, in close knit braids, closely done braids. Here's another representation of the same image. It depends the lighting, but there is no way if you're reproducing it honestly, this is what you're coming up with. There is no way if you're reproducing that image honestly, this is what you're coming off with. That I don't know why they've decided to make whoever's reproduced. This is obviously an old reproduction. I don't know why you've, they've decided in this old reproduction to make the goddess a white woman. This is the level of dishonesty that we're dealing with. This is the original image. This is a deep brown. A deep brown. These are deep brown to black people. Not olive, not tanned or whatever. Actual black people. <laughs> okay. This is the level of dishonesty that we're dealing with when it comes to Egyptology. And this is exactly what um, I believe Quelly, uh, sorry, Metatron is part of when he proceeds to play you, when he proceeds to show you this reproduction. Weak mind. Uh, it is, however, important to... We've heard it before. Come on now. Let's just skip to the bit, the pertinent part. Okay. There we go. What's funny, the Black Sea um, product. Saving your life from just two. What's funny, brother? Let me know. Um, Be a ticket, and you could be one of our 2,000 daily winners, like Lucky that. Jordan, who won £374. Bingo light, only at Tombola. I don't bingo my life. <sighs> Among the Egyptians, but the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image, with this specific colour. I need, I need quick. I need color and he quickly moves on 888 made to play not to skip oh my goodness eight, eight, eight. and with color and art we enter a whole new range of time i'll just take it back a bit Kush, which was south of Egypt, and those are representations of... Again, if the Egyptians were trying to say that, look at this brown colour we're painting ourselves, it's not an African, it's not a black African colour, we're just painting ourselves, um, we're just trying to depict olive skin tone. The Libyans, the Libyans are not... Why don't they just paint the Libyans the same red hue? The same brown, deep brown... <laughs> deep brown hue. How come? I don't understand. Why Why isn't a Libyan... Is the Libyan not on... Why, at least by modern standards, is the Libyan population not quote-unquote olive? No. The Egyptians are literally painting for you skin tones that you can find in africa they're saying we're an dark, asiatic we're, and a libyan we're black of course it's important to take into consideration the cultural and commercial and religious oh, exchanges yes. that have the very prominent and very powerful and advanced kingdom of kush which was south of egypt and those are represented egyptians are saying look we're black africans but we got some people on on this continent we got some people like neighbors next to us <laughs> who are even darker so the i think the blackest woman in the blackest person in the world is this sudanese south sudanese lady and she's a model and she is jet black that's all in africa that's all along that same stretch of real estate north east africa you know and we're supposed to look at this far right image of the egyptians say oh no what they were trying to do so you, you're telling me now that <laughs> it's just 
Oh, okay. We'll move on. ...of an Asiatic and a Libyan. Of course, it's important to take into consideration the cultural and commercial and religious exchanges that happened between the kingdom of Kush and Egypt. Of course, a certain percentage of Nubians, which will differ depending on which area of Egypt we are talking about, will have lived among the Egyptians. But the Egyptians do represent themselves with this image. Right. And we've touched on this again. This image is much more comfortably at home with the, and the image and the hair texture that you see in the image, much more comfortable being juxtaposed next to these people, the Afar, the Oromo people, lot, you, the, um, it, uh, what's, what's, the Tigray, all of these people in the Horn of Africa, black African people, who've been, who constantly are being pushed su 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 successively, s more and more so so sovereignly, more and more, Every day they're being pushed farther south into Africa, being displaced. We know what happened in the Aswan a few years ago, not a few years, that's 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 an over understatement, you know, where the Egyptian government just displaced masses and masses of black African, indigenous, proper Egyptians, ancient people with ancient blood in their in their in, in their veins, displaced them from the Aswan region, which is recognized as where you will get the mass of quote unquote Nubian Egyptians. Well we know what those those people are. They're the original Egyptians. They're the original Egyptians. And just completely displaced and it's still happening today. So Metatron would rather have you believe that what you're looking at when you see this image, you can see closely if you look closely at the images, all the time when you look closely at these images, you see tightly twisted locks. A very um we're very non-hairy people. We're very, we're not her suit, it would be the word. We're not hairy people. Very clean shaven, very clean cut. Every now and then you see a goatee, but that's about, that's about as much as we can grow <laughs> in comparison to the European, to the, to the Asiatic. We don't, we, we're, we're not as hairy people. And that's why, again, you'll find Egyptians aren't, you won't find Egyptians with massive beards as you see in uh, in um on the babylonian walls that's phenotype that's that's genetics that's that's who we are but no metatron wants you to believe that what you're seeing here aren't black africans with painting themselves with artistic expression painting themselves in the brown sometimes the black that you see no he wants you to believe that what you're looking at are let's have a look modern day egyptians let's have a look at what modern day egyptians look like yeah this is what the, oh yeah, yeah they've already they've got it there you will always see quora involved in these debates every time you type something to do with um um egyptians Quora is the den of racists and people who just want to confirm their own biases. So this is what we're supposed to believe. We're looking at people that look like this. They always show this statues, or which is a fake. We'll come to that in a bit. This is what we're looking at. These, th this type of a person right here. This is what we're looking at when we look at people um, with tight thank you thank you Pradoki. thank you i'll look into that this is what we're looking at these people do not look dark brown to me they do not look like what we're seeing here this is ridiculous with this specific color. And with color and art, we enter a whole new range of topics that I'd like to hopefully simplify for this video. How did the Egyptians use and create color and why do Egyptian women almost always look lighter in skin than their men? And was there any inner and sometimes hidden meaning within color itself. Well, each color was created by mixing various naturally occurring elements and each became standardized. Everything you're about to hear for the next five minutes is all supposition. There's no basis for this. There's no Egyptian 
artifact that claims this is why we use the colors we did this is all supposition masquerading as fact this is what modern day egyptology is for the most part in time in order to ensure a uniformity in artwork an egyptian male was always depicted with a reddish brown skin which was achieved by mixing a certain amount of standard red paint with standard brown experts say that this color was chosen because it was a realistic representation of the average egyptian women's skin instead was most of the time represented with a mixture of yellow and white and the reason of the explanation to this is because women tended to work the field a lot less than men they tended to stay inside and their the image that you're looking at is not an image of women painted as yellow. These are straight up white women. These are straight up white women that you're you're seeing in this, and they happen to be the wife, with or thought to be the wife and daughter of, um, a particular Egyptian um priest, who had who had passed, um, and so I don't know why he's brought this up. Nobody's saying there weren't white people in Egypt. Nobody's saying you would never have found a white person or a white-looking person or a person that looks more like the modern-day population of um, Egyptians. Nobody's, ever, nobody's saying that, okay? And again, these are... I don't, I don't know if I've already said this, but I'll say it now. These are very selective images he's pointing up. The vast preponderance of wall art, of reliefs that you will find show people, men and women, depicted in the deep brown to black type okay but metatron this is why i i'm not going to afford metatron the <laughs> i'm not going to afford this guy the um leeway that quelimika affords him quelimika is very nice to him in his response he says that you know um he's sure that you know he's made a few mistakes or whatever i don't believe that somebody with um a channel this size and who claims to be all about facts and evidence and could have missed the massive array of images that show men and women in dark brown however right we're gonna have to cut this short because um i've gone on for about two hours now and uh I've gone on for about two hours now and I'm going to have to make this a part into two or three parts. Maybe part two tomorrow evening. Um, I'm going to have to quickly sort that out. But I think that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do part two tomorrow evening and part three on Sunday evening. So, but I want to end here. What Metatron's doing here at 10 minutes 21 into his video is dishonest. Kweli Mika touches on it in his, in, in his video there are plenty, there's an array of Egyptian wall art, much more than there is the type that Metatron is talking about, of women who are depicted deep brown, um, just like the men. Now, what you will find, again, go look into it, the pattern you will find is when next, when next, when they're put next to men, the hue tends to be slightly lighter, okay? And that hue fades over time. It's it's more prone to fading and scratching over time. And I think that's what's happened. So, but when you find Egyptian women painted on their own, you will get them just deep brown like you get their men. I think the point that the artists were trying to make is that men, something to do with virility, something to do with, you know, men being darker than women meaning that yeah maybe they were out in the sun more or what what like just just to do with the a, a way of distinguishing male and female in a in a in a way that ancient people did but to say that they they all they depicted themselves as they depicted women as yellow and the men as that's nonsense i don't want the stream to start lagging again but this is something you can easily find for yourself this is something you can easily do, do a quick search of and once you get past one or two of the same images that the the race baiters like to use to say oh look look they were white once you get past those you see that for the most part when the women are on their own depicted on their own they're depicted in from jet black to deep brown 
with kinky hair texture. Africans. Africans. Okay, black Africans. But when they're with juxtaposed with men, they tend to be, I wouldn't even say tend to be, Kweli Mika goes into this. He shows lots of images where men and women are together and there's no difference in, there's no variation in color, okay? Um, but again, yet again, Metatron pretends like, no, the, the, the exception is the rule, you know? Oh, you know, oh, the, the women are yellow and the men are brown. This doesn't make any sense. Doesn't really... Their skin was lighter. If the difference in skin tone between men and women is darker or lighter depending on how much time they spend outside, then it suggests that even the darker tones we see are mostly a tan rather than the actual natural color that all. <laughs> I don't know, but when people are tanning, when 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 lighter skinned people are tanning to the point where they're having to paint themselves as red. Like red to like, we're talking deep brown, uh, looking like black Africans. I think there's a problem. I think we're talking melanomas kind of setting in there. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't. Egyptians would have. So it is possible that a light brown would be a good representation when it comes to what the ancient Egyptian skin looked like. If they were all black in the sense of a Nubian, they would not represent. That image that he's just shown is on the tomb of Hoi. Um, Kweli Mika has gone through it in his video, his response to this video. It, the tomb of Hoi shows Nubians in jet black, but also in the same brown that Kweli Mika, uh, that Metatron's talking about here. Um, complete dishonesty. Guys, I'm going to shut down the stream right now. It's been great. I will finish this either tomorrow or over another two parts tomorrow and Sunday. Bear with me. I'm going to make sure all the bugs that were uh, involved earlier today are not, we're not going to see any of that tomorrow and Sunday. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I'm just, I'm getting a bit blurry eyed now and it's just, what, it's 1am here in, in, in God's kingdom, in United Kingdom here. Um, and um, so, yeah, God's country, not God's kingdom. But um, yeah, I'm getting really tired. So guys, Roughly the same time, I'll put the details up on the channel and it's been absolutely, it's been a pleasure, it's been a joy, but I will be back here either tomorrow um, or tomorrow and Sunday, okay? We're going to finish this properly in style. Okay, cool. Thank you again for joining me. I'm going to go off now. Um, I don't know what... Um, cool. All right, fix all the boxes.